Jay. Yeah. Jason Tyler. Thank oh. you for your time. Busy man. With the mic, mate. Just keep it for a fist from your fist from your mouth. Right, okay. And as you chill, you can move it back and forth and just fucking relax. All right, mate. Relax. Relax. You, d- you can relax, though, me. <laughs> Isn't it? <laughs> mate, I don't know. Yeah. Pop star. Pop uh, star. Yeah. Although, um, what, were t- ah, what were we talking about before? Maybe. Before, before. Uh, <laughs> Institutionalised racism in the British Army. Yeah. That, uh, so, I, I don't want to touch on it briefly, briefly if you're at me. Um, just to get your perspective on it. Uh, so, I'm obviously referring to the, the you got two, um, we got two, uh, former soldiers. I don't, I think they're both out now. Who serve with three power. And they've, uh, I, I don't know what, what the, the allegations and they're taking the army to court, I think. Um, for, and they're claiming it's institutionalised racism. I use those words in inverted commas because I read it in the paper on the article. So I don't know if they actually use those words. Um, but I actually knew one of the guys. So one of the guys, when I was a platoon sergeant from 2009, 2011, <coughs> he, he was, he, he came from training yeah. in the white platoon. So I thought, okay, I'll just have a, th- have a think about it. And the guy is actually a decent guy. Right. He was, um, he maybe still is, but it surprised me. It surprised me the allegations came about, and then what annoyed me was the allegations of a claim as institutional racism within the British Army. Mm. Oh, no, no, within the parachute regiment is what they said. Now, my uh, it pissed me off straight away, <laughs> but then you got to think about it, you know, properly. Okay, there may have been things go on. They may have been subject to racist abuse or whatever. May I find it highly fucking unlikely, right? Yeah, I find it highly unlikely, and I also can't. I, I, there's no way. The par- parachute regiment yeah. or any other unit in the British Army, I'd say, is institutionally racist. Full stop. Yeah, I think that's uh, the institution. First of all, I think there's lots of different factors to this. I think also that to say something is institutionally racist, uh, racial, racist, racist in that mass of an organisation. First of all, the British Army. What is it now? Sixty. 65,000, something like that now. It's not as big as it used to be. But then the parachute regiment as a whole, are you going to just say the parachute regiment, you're going to say the whole of airborne forces in a brigade or whatever it is of two individuals are claiming that after after so many. I think that's a massive shout. And I think it's, is it to grasp the attention that this isn't an, a singular case or, or whatever it may be? Is it something that they've been coerced into saying? as the two, uh, one or two individuals, you know, I'd like to hear exactly what these guys are saying. You know, the guys that are accusing, I think it's the Ministry of Defence they want to sue Mm. about it. So as a former RSM, I've dealt with cases like this and it's hideous and it is absolutely destructive to the cohesiveness of a unit as such, not just the subunit or the people that used to know them or the people that were in that unit with them. Right, because that gets looked at. Everything gets looked at, and I think it's a tough. I think it's a big shout and a tough thing to go through. I don't think the papers, when they put these stories out, realise how damaging that just that story is. It's not about raising away raising awareness. Great, you know, sorting this out. Great, whatever comes for it. Great. I've not been there. I don't know the guys, but the fact of the matter is, it's what they're doing to everything around them. I don't. I, yeah. I mean, the thing is, with with uh, like you, when I when I when um, I mentioned this to you yesterday, like you, I thought, okay, I need to fucking have a proper think about this. Instead of just flying off the handle in my head, and one of the things I I, I came to, I I came to I, I've come to believe and, and is that for and I'm going to talk about infantry generals, yeah. infantry, yeah. airborne infantry. Right, I'm going to generalize. I'm going to speak for all of those units, right. rightly or wrongly, in saying that one of the most critical things. Uh, that that a unit needs to be able to f- uh, function effectively. One of the critical things, one of a number, is um, a variety of skills and inclusiv- inclusivity. Yeah. Right? Yeah. Power Edge, I think, is in a very fortunate position to be, I say, one of the most inclusive units in the in the army. I'm not saying that from a biased point of view. I'm saying that because because of where it comes from. 
So Power Ridge doesn't have a, speci- a particular catchment area. Doesn't have a particular geographical part of the country yeah. that they recruit from. It doesn't even even restricted to the UK. You know, you get some units of uh, like the old Black Watch, for example, battalions, King's Own, all those. Oh, there you go, local okay. battalions, exactly yeah. right. And so when you when you're a unit and you're um, recruiting from a specific part of the country, then you can quite often. I mean, look, you go and recruit up in if your catchment area has to, happens to be flipping northeast England, then you can bet your bottom dollar that that the that. that a lot of your uh, a lot of your unit sort of uh, right leaning um, white um, <laughs> you know people who've, who've had an entirely different upbringing to if your catchment area was London for example right? <laughs> yeah for sure so Paris yeah. doesn't have that we have a lot of people in we, we, and and so you have to be inclusive as does the whole army yeah. and I'm, I, when I went on, I talk about infantry I just think because it's 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 the teeth end of the, of the forces and, mm-hmm. and you you can't afford to um, like you say, you can't afford to have a bad environment. You can't afford to be uh, to not in, in, include people who are, are valid there. The way you the way you um, the way you alienate yourself in a unit is be a liar or be shit. Yeah. That's it. That is it. Right. Uh, that for the majority. I'm not yeah, saying no. like racism doesn't harm, doesn't uh, it? Does right. But it's definitely not flipping. I mean, it's my not tr- introduced. Yeah. I don't give a shit what you say. So you take the army as a sixty thousand, sixty five thousand, seventy thousand, whatever strong you strong force. You equate that to a town. You then find a town in this country that or village or whatever it is with that many people and say, "All oh, you people are racist." Can you? Mm. Can we find a town like that? And equate it to that because that's basically what you're saying. It's institutionalized racist. That means that on a maths test or whatever they do now, we teach people how to be racist. As as an army, do we? Do we bollocks? Come on, for fuck's sake! That's that's really. I think that's just shit reporting, and that's really sad. I think that's just to grab a headline, right? We like we both say. Uh, well, I can't say. You know, I don't know the two guys individually. I don't know their case. I have seen racism case go through in the army before, and I've seen what they've done to units. Not, not for the longevity of it, but through through the actual trial process or whatever it may be, and it it destroys the cohesiveness. Again, I keep using that word for the simple fact that that's what it is, and we need it. It's what you're saying, inclusiveness, right? And it, it comes down to good cunt, shit cunt. I'm sorry, it does. We all know those people in those units, yeah. Uh, and I think that's a massive factor to it how people then begin to feel alienated and don't like what they're doing. Everyone in the military. Yeah, when you mess up, you fuck, fucking hell, I got busted. You know, everyone fucks up, everyone gets busted. <laughs> There's a great story behind why I got busted. The simple fact of life is, I was a good soldier, and I was respected for that. And when I got busted, I was dragged back straight away. And as soon as I walked out the CO's orders, another OC went in from the unit and said, I'll have him, because I'm getting a full screw instructor as a trooper, because I'm busted back a trooper, and fucking crack back on. And mm. that was it. And then they guided me back through. Yeah, I was a dick for what I did and all honesty. And that's, another, that's you know, that's for another one. But the simple fact is, I was a good. I was thankfully classed as a good bloke at that time, and it didn't affect me in that way. Totally different thing, right? It's not racism what we're talking about, but it comes down to good and bad people, right? In the job, it doesn't matter what walk of life you do. You always get good and bad people at the job. Some people want to get better. Some people don't want to get better. You know, it's, it's a, it's, I think it's very human, right? What we're talking about, it's about the individuals themselves. I, I can't help thinking that sometimes, so you take that, and let's go back to the Reg and a company, you get people from all over, you get a drop mafia or whatever it may be, you know, you get all these different be- groups of people within that inclusivity. The common bond of the Airborne Brotherhood that you guys do, or any other unit as a brotherhood, right? A stigma attached to it, maybe, and a tradition, traditions, whatever it may be. I spent a lot of time. You see some of the pictures on in Instagram of me. You can tell I spent a lot of time out of in airborne forces because my cap badges around the side of me fucking head half of the time. <laughs> <laughs> Standard. Gaz, Gaz has me for it every, all the time. He fucking does. Smashes me through these old pictures I put up. But so you have that, you know, traits and things with you. I don't like the way this whole thing has come about. I just don't like the way that A, it's the parachute regiment and B, it's the army. Because do you know what? I did 25 years. I'm starting to understand what that means to me now as I go go on in life. And, you know, actually I'm fucking quite proud. (laughs) 
of being in the army for that long and getting through to the other side sort of thing. So while I'm not overtly every day running around shouting what units I was from and supporting them going to reunions and, and all this shit, I'm still very happy and proud with everything that I did while I was serving. And it's one of the massive things in my life is if you can be happy every day with decisions you make in life, and this is taken from another job that I used to do. If you can be happy every day with decisions you made in life, whether you've upset people, upset people, not upset people, and you, you go to bed at night and you can sleep with nothing on your mind, then you've had a good day at the end of the day. You know, if you've told somebody they were cunt, you've told them for a reason. If you haven't and you've patted someone on the back and you've been nice to somebody, you've bought somebody a coffee, you know, give a, a down and out person a tenner or go and get on some Greggs or whatever. Whatever you've done that day in your life, if you can go to sleep at night and sleep and rest easy, then you've done a good day. It's as simple as that. You know, it's about people being nice, I think. And uh, there needs to be more of it. Yeah. Just be nice. <laughs> Fuck. <laughs> 100%. Right, 100%. I hope, fuck, oh, you dig, we digressed here. Anyway, oh, I, no, so, yeah, so. no, 100%. It's, um, yeah, that's a, a realization. I, one of the realiz many realizations I've had recently, um, you know, in the last couple of years, and, and that is, uh, and we touched on it earlier, like, um, before this, you know, purpose and, and sense of, uh, sense of belonging and all that. And it's like, well, what the fuck am I here for? And, and, uh, and it was Jordan Peterson, and one of the things I, I, I took from him was, you, you can't, um, you know, you, you might, one of the best things you can do to give you, to, to just feel like you're, you're a valuable p person on this planet is exactly what you're saying, mate. Be nice, do good things, just be good. So, or have good intent behind you, behind decisions. It may go Pete Tong. <laughs> it may go Pete Tong, mate. Right? But if you can be good, and 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 do the things you should do, yeah, for yourself or for others. And yeah, and fucking fuck uh, everything else. Do you know what we can, we can crush this? You know, our little chat about institutionalized racism in the British Army. Um, there are, <laughs> I don't know this for a fact, right? But there are bound to be um, rapists, murderers. Uh, pedos you know all these different type of people in such a big institution all right and they haven't been found yet or they have been found or they're serving and you know they're just not uh, active at the moment or whatever there are all sorts of individuals in an institution that big there has got to be that many people but to say we're all that that's bollocks that fucking hurts it does it hurts that's uh, that, i just think that's wrong uh, another sorry another another yeah. issue with, no. with this thing is that is uh is that in this, like, this court case, if it goes to court? Because, well, interestingly, oh, the MOD haven't moved to settle it. Have yeah, they? no, no, no. Oh, so well, I think it might go to court. Yeah. yeah, right. So, but if it goes. Well, that'd be interesting. The, well, it'll be a nightmare, mate. Because, for the MOD, because it, it's, a, it's a community, you know, military yeah. community, but it operates completely. Things that are acceptable to say, for example, mm -hmm. in the military, in the infantry, especially infantry, or chief end units, Right, is not acceptable in fucking in in normal society, yeah. and so but but in that court case, things that were said and done will be will come up in evidence, and they'll mm -hmm. be and they'll be judged from a civvy street point of view. I'll give you an example, right? Like, go. I'll give go, you an example, right? I want it to be a good one. It'll be a good one, right, mate. On. So there's a I when I was serving the three powers, there's a there was a few um a few black guys serving over the time I was there. Yeah, at least two of them. I would greet in to each other. The first one I, I met was in training. I would greet in would be morning, you b cunt. And it'd be, and it'd, uh, and, and it would be morning, you Welsh wanker. And that would yeah. be, I would be laughing yeah, our tits yeah, off. Yeah, yeah. Laughing. Because what, what's with the, what's with the, what is it with, within the military? He got, it's humour. It's, there are oh, no right. rules. You break everything down. He knows I don't mean it. And I know he doesn't mean it. Cause if he's like, yeah. It, and in that example, I've got as much of a case mm -hmm. of flipping racism. Mm -hmm. And bullying mm -hmm. and all the rest as anyone else. I got beasted for twelve years. I'm fucking ginger. I was gonna say you know I can't believe you <laughs> Welsh ginger bastard, you know what I mean? <laughs> got beasted me. You know, uh, but that doesn't make me racist. No. It's the intent behind what you say is what it, makes you anything. Yeah. Any uh, racist, a bully, a, 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 you know, anything uh, like that. Uh, I, find, I, I find it really, really upsetting. Uh, do you know what? First of all, it's, I think it's great. I want to, anyone can watch this podcast. 
right? Anyone. And they doubt, they just, I think, you know, all these books that get written, I think somebody needs to write a book. It's probably, geez, bro. Well, I don't know if he's the best for it, but, you know, I'm thinking Grain and that. He's probably, okay, just right, to yeah, write yeah. about, because he's getting, I've seen he's getting a lot of flack for, of people, squaddies and not squaddies, about, uh, it just makes him look like a fucking warmonger and all this in his latest book and all that, and he just likes the war and all the war, you know, all this shit. But, so I read this book. I, uh, of all my friends that have written books at the moment, that's the one I bought, right? And that's the one I read straight away. And I sat there, right? <laughs> Because I went to Afghanistan first tour 2006 when we went out on the Herrick where we built Bastion and then fucked, I mean, in the Bondu and all that shit. And you had a far better time than I did. Right. And then I was back there, you know, all the way through. And then last tour was 2012 with mm. a TF, right? So the fact of the matter is, is that, you know, you see change over those times. But my point is this. Somebody needs to write a book. I remember back in the day, there was a book called Don't Cry For Me, Sergeant Major. It was about BAOR. And it was about some of the shit that squaddies got up to. Not war fighting. You know, it was just about life in Germany as a squaddie. It's an amazing book. I love you in tears. Putting ch uh, chieftain barrels through pub windows because they wouldn't serve them and letting off around. The, you know, bag <laughs> charge and all that. Yeah, it's epic, mate. And you can imagine this shit go on, right? Now, somebody needs to write that about the modern day Sergi because the way we communicate, the way we act. And I'm not saying, I'm not, you know, generally. Yeah, well, do you know what? I am proud of it. I don't give a shit. We are a different breed and we have that right to do that. Right, whether people understand it, like it, whatever, that's what needs explaining. There's ways we we do things that doesn't, you know. There's a lot of let's just say people would think a lot of people are gay when they're not gay in the military, for example. Some of the things that people do, it's just this. Everyone goes on about black humor, a black sense of humor, and all the rest of it. There's just this way of we get around our lives. Our lives are very different to normal people. And I've always said this, and we touched on this in the mental health thing, this is the same. Yes, we are unique. Yes, we are different. There is a different way of life that we lead in. You either buy into that, or you don't buy into that, and your partners and your extended family buy into that as much as they need to. But again, it's like something else. You have different tiers of levels who have to buy into this in your family. My mum and dad didn't laugh the shit I got up to in the army. She's finding out stories about me now because I'm not even talking about stuff and other people are telling stories about me, what I did. And she's finding stuff out, you know, off Instagram, whatever it may be. You know, a little message saying... Oh, your mum? Yeah, you didn't Your mum's on Instagram? <laughs> <laughs> she, she's been put on by my sister, mate, and she, I think she stalks me because I, like, I, haven't, I haven't let her follow me. She gets it off my sister. It's fucking crazy, I tell you. No, I'm not going but... Yeah, there's just, and I think there's levels. It all comes down to this way of life, and I think it becomes very interesting for people because they're not in that life, and they don't want to know. So this is a big show. Oh, my God, look what's going on in the army. The parachute, and you mean like this and that, and, and what have you, and you just think, right. Well, I'll tell you what, let's all stop speculating with shit stories. Let's hope that the MOD just don't just pay out. This is what I think. Let's hope it goes to trial and shit comes out in the wash. And let's find out. And if people are racist, they get fucking cap for it. If people aren't, then these two, you know, it needs to be there as well that these individuals have made false claims. You know, but hopefully the world's turning in that respect. You know, like, um, digress, but Cliff Richard doing this thing, you know, because he was accused of doing whatever, right? He lived with it for 10 years. Now he's fighting a campaign to start, like, if he was, you know, name these people. Or don't name them. Don't name them until they're guilty, found yeah. guilty, you know. There's so much more that can come out of this as well. It's the same. People do it in all walks of life. <laughs> what do we call it? Playing the race card? Right? Mm -hmm. In the military? I'm going to go there because that's what I had as a regi as an RSM. I had an individual in one of my units do that and play that. And it was f that's why I'm taking it. It's fucking horrendous. That whole squadron, that subunit, fucking like... 60 to 80 individuals for the whole time of that period while it was going for they just weren't a cohesive unit they weren't effective and they weren't operationally effective either mm. it uh, was horrendous yeah the other point to highlight in this is and uh, uh, i like going back I'm, I'm not, and as you said, I know, let me just say on. as well and, and i'm not saying oh don't bring it up because you're destroying the cohesive effectiveness of a unit i ain't going to cover my ass with anything i say but the simple fact of the matter is 
you're in the army, you have to be operationally effective to be a part of that unit as a regiment or a battalion. You can't have a subunit not being that. Or then your regiment's not effective. Yeah. No, yeah. You know, it, it, it is that destructive. It is that toxic. Yeah. It really is. So yeah. if, it's, if it is happening, it's toxic. If it's not happening, it's just been accused. Yeah, then it's just as toxic as if it was happening. Mm. That's what I really like to say. Yeah. It is horrendous. Yeah. And I, I yeah. And I, I, I'm not saying that you don't like it's, it. As I said, and you said it, it's not that it isn't, it's not that it isn't racist or murderers or whatever in that, mm. in the, in the military. They're there. I, and in my career, I came across people who were, who were racist people. Yeah. 100%. Yeah. But you know what? Do you know that, that, I, it doesn't like, make me or you though. I, I know, and the way I knew that is in, unfortunately, you know, um, is in, is in private conversations or in a group of people. And let's say we're all white. Yeah. Yeah. And they would, f they would feel, cause you can fucking say what you fucking want to say. Yeah. And they come out to comment. You think, okay, you're fucking blatantly racist. But, it didn't manifest itself in a in a bad way when they because they had to work because it's like I said there's people of all walks of life all races all fucking religions in the military mm -hmm. power edge any other unit right and you have to work with them and you can't have bad blood because guess what the guy could be or the girl could be the person who is saving your skin in a yeah. battle or to your left or right whatever yeah. exactly so it, it, it's even when it's when those people are there and those bad people you know with those with those thoughts those feelings about people aren't the same fucking color as them it doesn't manifest itself in in a in a in a, in a it didn't for me in front of me anyway in a, in a bad way that's not to say it doesn't happen you know you get a you get a racist person in charge of a company and you, you know or a battalion same as in a fucking department in civil street yeah. then it can be issues but that's why you have the rules and regulations in place what to do with it anyway let's fucking move on if you yeah. want yeah yeah yeah, yeah. <laughs> It's just, I think, it's, like, listen, I'm glad you asked. I think it's really interesting. I think there's more to come out of this. And do you know what? It's a simple fact of life. And we can, you know, we can wrap that side of it up and say, if they are, they get done. I hope they get fucking home, bang to rights. I don't give a shit, right? I don't know the guys that have been accused of it. And I don't know the guys that are accusing them of doing it. But whoever's right, I just want them to do it correctly and stand up for the army as a badge, the army and Her Majesty's forces rather than sweeping it under the carpet or pretending it's not. Let's have it out there. Let's have a look. Let's see what has been said. And let's see what comes out of it. You know, there's a, there's a lot of things going on in life where you just go, everyone speculates and gobs off, but let's just wait and see what comes out of it. Yeah, but that's why I mean, with that, with the evidence, I, I do think it'll go, I don't, th I do think there's going to be blame laid, whether those guys have been honest or not, and, and there was, and there's racism, uh, directed to them or not. I do think that with the evidence and in inverted apostrophes, yeah. that it will just go, the decision will go with them because they've got all those examples of, like you said, I mean, let me say, but mate, like, Humor in the army, and what you can say to each other is anything. And, and like racism is probably one of the more milder ones. Shit. They, like, you can joke about things, mate. Yeah, you know yeah, this I between know each other. I know what we're fuck. thinking, yeah. and I'm not going to mention what. No, you know, I'm not. There's I things you go, that. fuck yeah. me. And a lot of guys. If anyone fucking, heard this conversation? Yeah. My family would Scoot disown me. Yeah. You know, as an example. And it's and again, it's tongue in cheek humor yeah. between the military. But I think yeah, it's that risky bit in here. Let's be as risky as you can when we're talking about shit goes, and it's mate. wrong. Yeah, you, know. uh, you just think, well, that's fine if that stays in that way. Just talk about it, you fucking idiots. But don't include me. But if you don't like it, walk <laughs> out the door. Yeah. Yeah. Anyway, out. right. Uh, you're down your full break point. Yes, mate. I've been doing another break point with Ollie and the guys. Um, it's, I tell you what. You do some travelling, mate. Yeah, I know I do, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Cut about a bit, don't I? Yeah, I should start getting paid for it now. <laughs> you know. Right, break point, yeah. Um, so obviously Ollie's on the, on a TV show. And he has a company called Breakpoint, Breakpoint UK, and it's a progressive set of courses over certain weekends leading up to a, a fucking epic, by the way. Right, called Denied. Um, where you actually can't VW. Really? <laughs> yeah. And we've I won, we were run at the end of last year, at the end of the series. It works up to the end of last series and it is hideous. So just to clarify our previous conversations, mm -hmm. great point, basically, people are paying money mm -hmm. to come and experience something similar to the Escape and Evasion version, uh, the Escape and Evasion in, right. uh, on Special Forces Selection. Yes? Right, so obviously, uh, Alex, Ollie's former boats... Right, he was Royal Marines uh, and SBS, and he runs a company called Breakpoint with his partner Laura. And they get loads of 
former guys or guys with specialist skills to come in and help teach, you know, so it's credible. All right. And what it is, is we go from taking just anyone can apply for all the courses apart from denied. And we they go all the way from, um, I think or well, base camp. So that's a weekend of basic skills and drills. Then you have mission UK, which is more getting into weapon systems and doing little bits and pieces and look real interesting insight. Then they go on to evade. So all those two have been done this year already. Then we go on to evade, which is we've just done this. We have literally come straight from there to here on, I mean, uh, and that's an escape and evasion style exercise uh, with a hunter force, decent hunter force. All the gear, right? It's a really good setup. Uh, it's now moved from down south to based in Shropshire, just across the way. So it's more accessible to the whole of the country, basically moved to the middle of the country. And then obviously we've got uh, the next one that come is denied. Denied is it's. I mean, I'm not going to speak much about it because people have to come in and, and you know, pay the money and get on it. Um, and what they get from that is when you've got guys of certain backgrounds looking at it going, that's a bit tasty, to be fair, you know what I mean? You won't get me doing that. So it's, is it like the interrogation phase? No, no, no. And with, There's bits of interrogation phase all the way through these because we, we, this is it. So it's basically drip feeding training all the way through a process to make it through denied at the end because obviously you can't. Yeah, get out of denied. So when you pay to get on it, you know, you've got to put the effort in. You've got to have reached a certain standard to get there. And so it's built up practically very well to take somebody can go from the start on the first course they've ever done all the way through and hopefully with the fitness that they have to do on their own, obviously, and they're not there every weekend and get to complete denied. And it's, it's brilliant. Mate, that's mega. It's epic. So mental and physical yeah. tests yeah. right all the way through from so course one course two course three course mm. the names and if you smash all those and you're strong enough and you and you and you, you, the instructors mm. and all you think yeah you you you, you get to go yeah. you get invited on the denied mm -hmm. denied is more the same but the hardest one yeah, yeah. and you're saying you can't when you get on denied you can't <laughs> withdraw yourself off <laughs> they can but Jimmy, that's why we call it denied because we won't let you <laughs> You know, it's it's <laughs> mega, mate. It's um, no, listen, and it's really good. And there's there's, I want to. The, the good thing we can speak about this is, it's not just a bulk of it, bunch of ex squaddies beasting. And we've come up with this plan. Let's be somebody, and it's really good. And we're gonna look Gucci's fucking all the kit, and we're gonna look really cool. We actually coach these people through everything, right? With the, any questions, we'll answer the questions, and we will coach them through it. You know, there's a lot of this mindset stuff going on at the moment. There's a lot of this mental toughness going on. And so I've been doing it for years with the with e teams and all the rest of it. And, and there's a lot of this going on, and yet a lot of people want to have a taste of proper resistance to interrogation. Because, to be fair, mate, there's not a lot of it out there, and there's not a lot of people. There's a lot of people who chat it, but I was on a unit where there's very few members of it at any one time, and we all know each other. So there's a lot of people selling stuff out there and saying that this, that, and the other, and they've never done it in their lives. <laughs> we, are, you know, we get cases of this all the time of people saying, "Oh, I want to come out. Oh, yeah, I'm out. Oh, yeah, I'm a cack instructor. Yeah, I can do this. I can do that." And it turns out they've just read a couple of good manuals and do a bit of airsoft at weekends. It's fucking horrendous, and they're putting people through things that they really shouldn't be. Mm without the correct levels of training going through. So it's all encompassed and it's all designed to get people to a stage. People come on it for different reasons. In the background, there's a thing called Prime Evolution, which is a fitness, um, well-being and health program that they can sign up to and do it online with one of all these guys, a guy called Dave Tillotson, and on Ollie, and they run special weekends, meetings in London and all the rest of it, to do sessions and all the rest of it. And that's more fitness, nutrition and health-based. So that's running in line with that. Not everyone who does Breakpoint is on Prime Evolution, but, you know, it helps if they are, right? There's full support all the time. You know, we're easily accessible, all of us, at any time sort of thing, especially with social media around. And what they also get to do is meet guys and pick their brains and talk to them over the weekends. And it has become a community. Now, the other side of that is everyone that works with Ollie. Uh, and Ollie's obviously got strongman.org, his um, uh, charity running. Everyone who comes and works is ex -squad. I think there's one guy that's not military, but he massive rope access guy. So we have having to do all the ropes and skills and drills and all the safety stuff. So what Ollie's doing is he's getting the lads down. It's basically, I hate saying this, but it's mates, mates. You know, yeah. if you know somebody and you think they'd be good, come down, invite them down, and they come down and they help out on the weekends. It's part of the DS. Or part of the team, 
part of the training team. You know, we, you don't, we, we kind of stick away from the DS and all that sort of stuff now. We're just training team because we've all got our specific areas that are great for training people. And i tell you what, mate, my side of life, the, like having even just finished one literally job over here, the amount of people that want to do this and they want to improve themselves, it's, it's fucking good to see. It's good to see. Not your standard chisel chin, six foot four machine, CrossFit guru, right? Coming on these machines, it is the you you could pick somebody out of every walk of life, right? I drop them into break point, and they've been, and they've done it, and they've been there. Right? Why do you it think is that epic. is? Why do you think that is? I, do, you, I think do you think it's one, not? Do you, do you think people are more um, at the moment more keen in society, more keen to push themselves, test themselves these days than, than previous? Or I think there's a massive trend, for want of a better word, rocking through society at the moment of people who want to improve their self. I do a lot of it in Instagram, don't I? Uh, if you don't like, if you don't like somebody blocking them, all this sort of shit. This, this, this mindset, this mindfulness, and looking after yourself. You know, I think we digressed as human beings when we started prime evolution, as it were. You know, from eight men and whatever, coming all the way through of being natural. You know, out there working man on the ground. We, uh, we dip and trough, don't we? As human beings, of what we do through evolution. And I think there's a big trend at the moment for people going back to basically like CrossFit, lifting your own body weight, all this sort of stuff. Being out there hitting things with, you know, hitting tires with some sledgehammers, doing functional fitness as such. And we all know where CrossFit was born. It was out in theatre, you know, when we didn't have a gym or anything like that, you know. And I think people, there's this massive drive of a certain swathe of the community who want to better themselves, not just physically to look good, but mindfully as well to feel good and to take control of their own life back for want of a better word and to take control of themselves. And that's especially what I like to try and do. You know, um, everything I do, I speak from experience, you know, same as saying you wouldn't ask somebody to do something if you haven't done it yourself. And me turning my life around from where I've been, uh, it's helped me massively. And I look back on things. I used to look back at things, certain things that I did. I think that's what brought me. Right. But now, I look back at it differently and think, well, it did, but I'm now using that same thing to make me better. So the knowledge that I can impart and you know, reference the official receipts that and all the rest of it, nothing changes. You know, we don't teach TTPs or anything like that. It's a program, you know, that we design that people will enjoy because A, they're paying customers and B, you know, they're getting a little bit of an insight and yeah, they get to meet people off the show. Yeah. Whether it be us, <clears> DS. <throat> or some of the students that go through the TV program, right? And there is that bonus, and they do, you know, they guys want to meet people. They want to see what they experienced, and they want to have a little taste of that. I think there's so many people in the community out there who doubt themselves. You go, ooh, I should have got that. How many people do you get? Oh, you should apply for that, all this sort of stuff. Well, on a smaller scale, on a tiny smaller scale, that's what we're doing down there sometimes. But it's nothing like, it's hard to say this, I can't contradict and say there's nothing like that. It's Ollie's product and it's it's evolving every year. Not one course that I have done, I've done a couple of years now, has been the same. We change every course it's slightly or tweak it. It's always getting better. It's always evolving. And it's, mate, again, today, what we put people through this weekend, not one of them left with that smile on the face. And they all come up giving you hugs, want to shake your hands, get a picture, all this sort of stuff. It's achievement, they love right? it. If and nothing else, it's achievement, mate. It's if a massive, else. massive life achievement, and I like seeing it now. I do, you know. I, uh, you know, even though I lost your way a bit, negative ninny and all this through life, I love seeing these people go away. And also, there's a community going, like I said, and we're seeing them grow as individuals as well. And then they take wings, they spread, and they go off and do their own thing, positivity, and they go and be nice to people and do nice things. Which is there's nothing wrong with that. We're we're not creating monsters. Too many people and too many things are creating monsters, and this isn't. And it's a it's a really good professional setup with credible people, and it works. It really does work, and it, it can only get bigger and better. And you know, there's little corporate courses that we do here, there, and everywhere. There's one on Wednesday, but generally, the you know these courses we stick to them, and they're there every year on the website. Boom, get your paperwork in and get it done. Mm. Yeah, and it is that little taste of the, the TV show as well. Because the guy's there. As the start of, so you've been doing that for a couple of years. Mm. Breakpoint with uh, helping Audio. As was there a crossover between you starting Breakpoint and your own mental uh, um, struggles through 
Yeah. Was there a crossover? Um, right, no, it's really, it's really weird, actually. I was, when, so I left, I was in Afghanistan with the boys 2012. I left in, finished the tour in October, flew home, I retired, and I was out of the army in January 2013. It was that quick, four months. Fucking hell. Tried to, I tried to... Uh, resettle over Christmas yeah that didn't go well but <laughs> <laughs> no it was all my it was all my plan and to be fair I was doing a favour and I did stay on an extra couple of months doing because I had a specific role to do and there was nobody else to do it and I'm not making myself sound good but there wasn't and I had to train up with the guys before I could leave and get out or they were going to pay me for another year and I was going to stay in for another year so that wasn't going to happen was it yeah, I'd set up my own business. It was really cool. Everything was good. 2013, 14, 15, 16, it was fine. I thought it was fine. Obviously it wasn't, but I didn't think that there was anything wrong with me. It was just everyone else around saw it. Yeah, massive dip. Fucking, anyway. Um, when it came to... So I went to the dark place that everyone talks about. Fucking hell. Um, I just got ill. Got really bad. Wanted to commit suicide. Tried it didn't succeed, then out of the blue, I was fixed by a, a professional rugby league player. There's a long story behind that. Um, is, and that was then my journey on to uh, recovery and helping myself, and that's what I did. When you say fixed, go on. <laughs> well, it's, it's, it's a shit time to use, really. But So basically, um, on the night, um, I, I'd made the decision to commit suicide. I was planning it. Like in any good squad, I was planning a real good mission. You know what I mean? I was squared away. Uh, did loads of recce's, found the place where I was going to do it up on the moors behind. I, I was living in Rochdale at the time. Um, and there's Pennines are right behind us. I'd squared away a spot where nobody would find me. I wouldn't distress anything. There wouldn't be the man was found by a dog, a uh, man walking a dog today because they just don't go up there. You know, um, it, it was planned really well. And I remember going home that night, seeing my daughter and, and my missus, uh, uh, you know, at the time, and going, oh, fuck, I've got nothing to do. I'll, I'll wait until tomorrow. I couldn't do it earlier. I had to do it when I said I was going to do it. So I think so I was like, let's make sure everything's in order. And I remember sitting there and going, oh, fuck, there's that uh, business networking thing tonight. Because obviously I've got my own locksmith business and locksmith and safe business. And I'll go to that because it was at my mate's restaurant in Rochdale. So I went down there um, because uh, my accountant who was going rung me up and said, are you coming tonight? And uh, why? And she, uh, she rung me up a couple of days ago. She said, oh, um, um, Dan Scullthorpe's coming down next week in Great Britain. I was like, I don't know. I'm going down Scully. You know what I mean? Legend. Scully, uh, Scullthorpe family sort of thing. So I went down there, um, got dressed up, went down there, had a bit of free bait, sat there listening to him. And with all the things I've been through with shit charities that fucking say they help but didn't help, and don't get me started on them, um, big major charities that just like to look, make it look good, um, he gave a talk from his charity called State of Mind because he's been through a very rough time as well. And it's State of Mind is the charity set up by him and Phil Viewers and a few of the rugby league lads and they really mentor and they're getting the word out mental health in the world of rugby league and corporate worlds and all the rest of it he gave a talk that night and i still to this day don't really know what it is i do credit him we saving me um he uh he just said things and it just fucking think about it now <laughs> mm. uh, i went to the toilet in this posh restaurant fucking blubbed my eyes out for the first time in uh absolute years um I'd cried, I found emotion, yeah. And he came in the toilets, he'd seen it, so he came out and said, he's fucking walked through the toilets, he went, you all right, mate? <clears throat> <clears throat> yeah, yeah, I'm sound sort of thing. Anyway, he carried on, finished, and we were all meeting him afterwards, I went, oh, mate, fucking big fan, you know, rugby league and all that, followed it all my life, Northerner. Um, I know you probably don't. <laughs> <laughs> <clears throat> and um, I sort of went, and he's talking, he said, you all right? I said, yeah, yeah. So he's talking, he said, are you, uh, what are you doing? I said, oh, I was in the army a long time. So he started talking, he knew straight away, yeah, I fucking knew he knew. And we had a chat, we had a sit down, basically I promised him that I would go and get squared away at the GPs the next day. And, and you didn't? Yeah, and I did, I walked straight into, no, sh no word of a lie, Dr. Gupta, Penine Surgery, fucking little bro, I walked straight in there, said, I fucking need help. And I went for the history and within, he said, right, here's this squared away. It's the only, when he did all the tests and that, it's the only taste I've ever been top of 
well exceeded expectations. <laughs> you know what I mean? This guy is going to fucking hurt himself. I, think so. I, I waited for the next stage, which was a couple of weeks. And then the next person that I credit was saving me apart from myself, because there's three people as Dan school for Nick and uh, Nicola, my, who went on to counsel me for two, nearly two years and myself, because I decided that I wanted to say myself. It's as simple as that, mate. Yeah. You know, and she was working for the NHS called the military veteran service. And she, yeah, she stuck with me. So you imagine this, right? <laughs> Human intelligence. I know a little bit about it. Um, it's what I did for quite a long time in the military towards the end of my career. Um, an interrogator, resistance to interrogation instructor, and then I've got this counsellor trying to get into the deepest part of my life and why I am. And she she actually admits this. If you could get her in this room now, she'd be slapping me around the head going, for eight months we had a verbal war because I just wouldn't let her in. There's something inside me that would stop getting... I'd always build up to that point of talking about stuff and I'd just something just stop. I'm like, well, I can't do this. You know, and we had literally, and she, she was amazing. She, we had this massive thing, you know, I wouldn't turn up for appointments and I, I knew what I was talking about in the next session. So I was fucking, anxiety was coming out. I was building up to it, you know, it was fucking, it was horrendous. And we, you know, she stuck with me. She was one of the best, best, most qualified people in the Northwest. What was her name? I, I can't give oh, a okay, cool, but Nicola, Nicola, Nicola. Um, Nicola. Yeah, she's an absolute, Amazing person. Funnily enough, just to hit on that, like last year, I got a shout saying, "Oh, can you speak to this guy?" Because they're thinking of closing the military veteran service down in the NHS and passing the funding somewhere else. Fuck me, that's another story. I, went for, I kept this guy on the phone for an afternoon, mate. He was only meant to be on the phone an hour. Hammered him. And another thing, you dick. Why are you taking the money off these people? They're saving lives every fucking day. You know. Um, but yeah. So from there, when I came out of the other side. Uh, three major things happened to me so and this is what where i got the head shed from um when i came out the other side i was a bit lost you haven't got this appointment to go every week you again you you have the you're at this t-junction right you're either gonna crack on and fucking find this find who the new person is i always say when you come out of therapy you have to find out because you've been stripped back to bare bones and rebuilt i think and you're suddenly not the person that you thought you were. You're more emotional. You're more in tune with your feelings. You become a very nice, you become a nicer person, uh, as far as I'm concerned. That's what I've become. I'm, if you want to call me softer and a bit of a fanny, fucking crack on. I don't care. Because that's what I think I became. And then I decided that there was this, um, I needed to find who I was and what I needed to rebuild myself. There were certain things in my life still that I had to fix. Just as I finished therapy, I was doing a job in Barclays on a safe. A, a legal job in fucking hell. <laughs> Jesus, that come out wrong. And I got this phone call. So you imagine I'm coming out this side, I'm a bit wobbly, don't know where I am. Dad phones me up and goes, Yeah, like, yes, typical love and dad. And he just went, Right, got leukemia. Your been dad to, said that. <laughs> been to the doctor's, got leukemia, need you to come to the hospital where family's going next week, Blackpool. You come in. I went, uh, Yeah. You all right? I went, Yeah, I'm fine. He went, Right, speak to you later. Jen, no word of a lie, I'm sat behind the counter in a bank trying to open the safe and I've just had that phone call. I'm like, screw the fucking note, what's going on here? So I put it to the back of my mind, cracked on, distraction, did it. At the same time, the lad who I served fucking 25 years with, PJ, best mate, uh, he got diagnosed with a brain tumour. <laughs> I was like, fucking hell, it comes in freeze, what the fuck else is going to happen? So, coming out the other side, I found I was still battling. I was battling loads of demons. When you come out the other side of therapy, it's really hard to explain, but you're not just fixed. Somebody doesn't wave a wand. You've got to carry on what you were doing in therapy. You've got to carry that on. And you've got to fight to be that person that you want to be. And this way it comes back to being brilliant with Breakpoint. The third thing that happened was I got a phone call. <laughs> My mate, Chris, who's the umpire, the guy that you never see big massive six foot seven Aryan looking bloke because he's German um, and it was like literally I'd not spoke to this guy since I left the wing years back like 2010 maybe something like that and he went uh, 
Right, Joe. I went, oh, mate, what are you doing? He went, yeah, just a quick one. He said, some woman's going to phone you from London. Do me a favour. Just listen to her. I went, what? He just put the phone down. I'm like, the fuck is this like? Some MI5 shit. What's going on? Next minute, this woman phones me. She went, oh, hi. I'm one of the producers for SEC Days Wins. How would you be interested in coming in the show? Chris has said that we need you. Or we'd like you to, to have you. I was like, um, what, what's the show again? I'd not, I'd, Jen had not seen it, man. I didn't see the other two series. Uh, sorry, the first one. I didn't see the, f was it the first one? The one in the jungle? I don't know. They went to the I jungle. Watched, didn't they? Uh, don't, shut up. <laughs> you've, got, you've got a picture of me on your wall, for fuck's sake. And, uh, no, so I hadn't watched it. So I, I went, yeah, yeah, yeah well, I'd love to talk. And I went back, had a quick cook smell, had a quick can look around, seeing what I thought, I thought I said, yeah, right, I can, but am I ready for this shit sort of thing? I'd lived such a life where I wasn't even on fucking Facebook or anything, mate, I was like, what do I do sort of thing? But I had nobody to talk to, nobody to ask, didn't have a theory. Part of the shit that I did in the military broke me in certain years and certain times of stuff that I was doing. It broke me, and I do admit that. Um, and this was sort of one of them. So I decided that to go back and do this, to face it, even though it's not real, it's just a, you know, it's a TV show. I was like, maybe this will work. And the other bonus was it was in Morocco. I've never been to Morocco. So I went, yeah, okay, I'm fucking in, I'm in, I'll do it. But then I had like a six month wait and every day I questioned my decision. I was like, fuck. And then it started to think, well, oh, can I even I can do that job anymore that I used to do? Because I'm going to be on telly in front of everyone. And if I'm a shit gun, everyone's going to tell me I'm a shit gun. Mm. So I don't know why I chose to do it, but something inside of me told me to do it. So I did it. Uh, and thankfully it, it went well. And it, one of the bits with me on was one of the big ones of that series in Morocco where I fucking played them off against each other. And there's a fucking funny story behind that as well. Because the lad we were going to base the interrogation approach around, VW'd, and walked past me with Volley the other way as I planned a two-hour approach on him. He walked past me. Just what? What's going on there? Next minute, <laughs> Chris went up to me. And went, "Fucking well, improvise! Don't get in there, because <laughs> it's live. There is no cut. Take this, do that. It's a full-on session, as if we do it like we were doing. So there was no backup. There was no nothing. Anyway, apart from that, so that was one of the things that went on. But that's what. If we just drag that back a little bit, because I'm fucking rambling on it. The bit that snapped me through therapy was there was never any place for you to go i always used to come out of therapy going fucking hell why should we just just this place where i could go every time i needed to do it it was the perfect environment that i wanted that i could build and i could see and i could sit there and talk to her about this because the environment for me is everything and what i mean by that is the nhs i love it right <laughs> i'm a fan of it a massive fan of it when i used to have sessions with nicola we used to have to book places different places there was no building we could go to there was no office there was no therapy room i did therapy in doctor surgeries uh, receptions doctor surgeries uh, fire station crew rooms i mean that was a classic ramsbottom fire station crew room we went in there sat down and just as we started the session in this crew room the whole of blue watch coming on all right mocker do you want a brew <laughs> No, mate, I need you to fuck off out of your own fire station and let me do this for an hour. You know, it was horrendous. Why, you know, why wasn't there anywhere to go? Because they, the facility themselves, they don't have a location. You oh. can't go to it. And they travel around the whole of the northwest seeing people. So the charity that I was involved with at the time, the Veterans Garage, one of the first things they did there was dedicate a therapy room that they built to the NHS Military Veterans Service. So that in the west side of Manchester, Eccles side, that in the veterans garage there was a room that they could book every time for free because they'd helped me so well so coming out the other side we did get them somewhere but what she had to do was book places i mean one of the doctor surgeries in Rochdale we used to go one of the problems i had with a certain incident was babies crying <laughs> right the day i was booked to go to that Rochdale doctor surgery every day was the pediatrics inoculation day <laughs> So in the room behind laugh. me, mate, Jen, you know, you can laugh. That's what we do. In the room behind me, there's fucking babies screaming, screaming and crying every five minutes. And I'm going, yeah, I fucking don't need to be here. And I just got up and walked out. Fuck I was like, I hell. fucking can't be here, mate. And, and I was gone. Uh, so it, that's where 
the next the headship came about because I thought I need to fucking and that was kind of my driving force coming out the other side of all these bad things still going on I was right I need to focus on something right what can I focus on you know there's certain aspects of my life I needed to sort out one of them was my private life and my family life and my wife and the second one was this and building this place and I've become obsessed with it the headshot yeah and, and it's it's got to happen it's gonna happen and the big driving force behind making me do that was our mate <laughs> Gaz and we were sat in Costas one day in Bakeup in this fucking Rosendale you know some shit little place and I just kept talking to him about it and talking to him about it and he looked at me and just went will, will you just fucking do it just do it stop waiting for everyone else to help you and do it and yeah and and so that's how that sort of transformed so it's it's hectic mate and obviously dad didn't get through so we buried him then uh, you know not long after that in within the year I think PJ passed away really suddenly uh, so we had to bury him and, and yeah and from that though what came from that was how I dealt with death because you know just generally all of those marks on my arm are for very good friends that I think I lost through 25 years whether they be tumours helicopter crashes whatever it may be car crashes suicide whatever it may be so I thought death's always going to be around death's always going to be amongst me no matter what you know there's no point in fearing it let's just crack on with this and and and, and live through it in that respect and move on but I need this place and the place that, that we're trying to myself and Joe um, we're trying to build a unique retreat that's all it is for people who are at a certain stage after therapy generally so when I was I came through therapy you know I said I was lost you do you, you have this lost feeling you have this ooh, bit on my own now I don't know where to go um, and that gave me doubt and I'm not telling everyone that set up a headshot when they come out of therapy I'm telling you to find your own path and find out what you want to do and that was mine and that was good for me but this was a place and I think that you can give back and I can help people who are in a similar place so everything I do like I say I'm talking from experience I haven't read it in a book I ain't fucking, I haven't done a BA honours degree in, in psychotherapy or any of this shit or, or, or any of that. I basically speak from the heart and that's what I do on Instagram with some of my posts. It's just put my feelings out there because I ain't afraid to do it. Uh, I'm helping somebody at the moment who everyone wants a piece of and he ain't ready to stand up and talk in front of people. What I found when I started doing corporate gigs which I don't get paid for, and I won't take any money for, because I want to spread the word, because I work on the same theory as Danny spoke that night, and he saved one life, so if I, I'm not being a fucking martyr, and I know it sounds corny, but if I can speak, I don't need paying for it, because if I can speak, and it can touch somebody like it did me, then that's worth a million pounds. Yep. Jen, and I fucking mean that from the bottom of my heart. So, back to the headshed, the headshed is a place that we're going to create, to be a bespoke retreat for families, people, individuals, who I've spoke to you, I'll give you a little brief about it before, to go and get the time and space they need in the correct environment that will help fix them, right? I'm not, this isn't your last chance retreat, this isn't a place where you're going to go to uh, fix yourself because you're, you're, this is the last chance. No, I need people who have come out of therapy, who are going to pass the evaluation to come to the retreat, <clears throat> who are going to be at the right stage of their journey, therapy journey or whatever it is to come and better themselves who basically want to buy into a better version of themselves and, and, and do that. No, have their direct, they're not coming to me for a direction. You've got your direction. You just need the place to implement it. And that's basically what it's going to be about in a widest form. I don't really, I know it sounds stupid, but I don't really want to harp on about it because I want people to go on YouTube and go on the headship base, follow it, and see what it's about. Mm. The only place we're at at the moment is we've got another location up in Scotland, Central Scotland, North Highland, Central Scotland. It's 8,000 acres. It's not all mine, but we, we've now hooked up with a guy that owns that land. It's 8,000 acres. You know, I'll tell you where it is, on, potentially on the side of Loch Tay. Right? It's an epic, epic place. And it has some just masses of potential for us to take people up there and groups up there and families up there and get the help they need and and help basically help them 
get along the path that they've chosen to take in recovery and what they want to go. But it's by no means a last chance saloon. You know, it's not going to fix you in a weekend, but, you know, you're going to buy into something that will help you and help others, and it will become a community. You know, I'm, I'm, by the way, I'm not starting a cult in the Highlands. I don't <laughs> want people to come and live there and dance around and shit. You know, it's it, it's there's a lot more to it than that. Uh, and it's it's very exciting actually, mate. It's yes. it's building that place that I always wanted, you know. And it's just going to be good for the soul. It's going to work. It's going to be amazing. Yeah, really. it's just good. It, is, it sounds amazing, mate. And previously we spoke about it as well. What, what <clears throat> interesting what you say about uh, when you come out the other side of uh, mental health treatment hmm. is that it's like. Um, I suppose you can liken it to flipping, you know, having your hand held, and then all of a sudden, you know, you've, yeah. your hand's not being held anymore. You know, you you're in a you're in a better, and I've not I've been through counselling, but not to the extent you have, absolutely not. But you, it, it, it's it's almost as easy after going through it to mm. fall uh, to fall down the pit again as it is as it was the f- first time it happened. Um. And it's knowing, it's it's learning or being having the information to understand how to move forward. The therapist, the counsellor, can give you can give you the information, yeah. uh, what they know, you know, from their experience. But then it's moving forward with it and and actioning things and from becoming part of a community, like you say, or yeah. knowing about the head shed or or um, or or a big thing is finding value in. In what you do in life, you know, because that's a big issue. Regardless of what your yeah your, your mental, your what if you got a diagnosis or whatever. Mm. <clears throat> Obviously, you know, a bunch of different things play into it, but the value side is a big thing. I mean, b- b- feeling a valuable part of society, like I said. Breakpoint, mate. Yeah, Breakpoint is an example. A head shed as an example for, for you. Mm. I mean, as mm. an example, mm. best thing in the world helps you and helps other people. You know. Um, to, uh, like f- for for me, one one part of that is like Team Rubicon is part of that. Yeah, 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 as, yeah. as an and example, I, you know I'm on that, right? Yeah, and yeah, for, so. oh yeah, 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 and for other I'm and for try. other people as well, <clears throat> it's, it's finding that thing and understanding that's that's that can help with it, and then it's accepting those th- that those emotions right. and opening yourself up, right. which is f- especially for ex-military is a fucking nightmare. What fascinated yeah. me earlier, I was thinking about when you were talking is. How ironic, mate, that your job, you yeah, know, yeah. what you're an ex, you're an expert in breaking into the mind, understanding yeah, yeah, people's yeah. minds, breaking in there and getting what you want out, and uh, but reverse that to under like uh, seeing it in seeing understanding your own mind and being able to break into your own mind and get the information out that you need to move forward with and letting someone else break into it like uh, Nick epic, <laughs> epic. And she, I think, I'm, I, you know what, I'd probably give her a lot of fucking sleepless nights. The point I made, I thought about that and I forgot to mention was, I thought I knew about it. CBT, all this shit, I'm fucking all over this. Jack the lad, I know this shit. What I didn't realise was, I, my, I was engineering me to stop her. Because I thought I would, so I basically, every question she had, I was too ahead of her. I was back in the world, I was doing my job, and I thought, hang on a minute, this is you, you know, this is, and it was just so complex, mate. I'm not going to get into it, but it was very complex. And, and do you know what? So much kudos for just sticking with me, because at any time she could have gone, oh, fuck off, you don't want the help. Obviously, she can't, cause she's a professional, but in her head, she must have been going, fucking hell. Just let the defenses down. It took eight months, basically, to break my defences down. Literally six to eight months, mate, to break my defences down and start progressing and start. So eight months to actually get to the start point. So we were all the way back, all the way forward to eight months to then start, to then start therapy. That's why it took so long, you know, and it's just really, really tough for me to do that. And that's a great point that you brought up, mate, because I didn't think of it like that. I knew that's what I was doing, but I didn't think of it like that. You know, the other side of that was my family. I had a wife and a daughter. And, you know, sometimes it gets to a point where people can fall out of love. Right? And I had fallen out of a love a long time ago well, before, I believe. My wife at the time had fallen out of love with me. She, but then it got to a point where she just wouldn't, I don't think she accepted it. 
virtually the first time I told him I am. So that needed sorting, and that was something that I needed to get done. Uh, I didn't have a girlfriend. I didn't have a mistress. I had fucking no time for that. Right, I was try I was on this path of trying to fix myself. But you imagine one of the hardest decisions then I had to make was say, do you know what? Got this out. Got a successful career. Got a good business. Right. Got this big house. Uh, got my family. Everything's right. But something isn't right. Something still wasn't right. And this is where you notice on a lot of my posts say sometimes you have to be selfish. You have to think of yourself. You have to think of yourself to save yourself. Sometimes recovery comes from within. It's my big, it's big saying, uh, and it's not my saying. Somebody gave it to me, but I love it. Because you have to fix inside yourself before you, externally people can see you. And there's certain things I did. And I think before I went to Chile to film the last series, um, I had a big chat with, you know, it was leading up to it, certain things. I had a big chat with my wife. Um, and I just said, look, I, I, well, you know, basically we had that chat. You know, when I came back from Chile, um, I was moved out of the house. That night I got back, 24 hours of traveling. I went to live with my mum's. And from there, another whole chapter of my life that I needed to change started to change. So it's not about, and I think the thing that we take from that is, you know in your life there are certain things that you have to change to progress. I could have stayed in that relationship. I love my daughter. Why wouldn't I? You know, and I, I, I do, you know, I loved my wife. I just wasn't in love with her anymore. And we weren't in the relationship that we did were when we married and we were down the line. 15 years we've been together. So, uh, and we're still married, obviously, because it's yet to come. But the simple fact of life is that I'm, <laughs> this sounds fucking weird, right? But I'm really proud of what I did and I had the courage. I, I'd, I'd felt not right for a couple of years. I needed that courage to say to her, because I mean, like, fucking hell, you know, why are we, why are we going to carry this on, right, if we don't feel like we should be together, or I don't feel I should be with you, I don't, you know, I'm not in love with that person anymore. It's a massive, I, mean, I never thought I'd see myself having that discussion, I really didn't. But How many times did you go through it in your head, though? So this is what I'm saying, so actually... You've got to make those calls. You've got to make those decisions. And they're fucking brutal. I've got a 12-year-old daughter who's so fucking confused because dad now lives in Scotland. Yeah? Why isn't he in Manchester? You know? She's not stupid. She's, been, she's just been through a search. She's nailed it. That's great. But it, it, yes, it's affected her. So don't be scared of the outcomes. You're not the first person to ever separate. You're not the first person to ever get divorced. It's just a massive part of your life, but don't let it consume you. Yeah, I am on a path. I believe I'm on a path that I've, I've now designed. I've set myself that path. I've got to create that path. I've got to keep going. You know? Make myself happy. Yeah, selfishly, yeah. Make other people happy around me because it is going to make them happy around me regardless of how they feel at this time, yeah. And live the life, that one life you've been given. Oh, this, it all sounds a bit cliche and I'm, I'm not really good with words in that respect. I'm great at interrogating me. I'm fucking shit at talking about <laughs> stuff. The fact of the matter is, is you've got to, if you're thinking something in your head, I wish, I should, I could, then what's stopping you? The only thing that's stopping you is your head. So just do it. All right, don't be reckless and mean, you know, I'm going to go buy a Ferrari with all my life savings. No, none of that shit. You know, I'm talking about proper life decisions to enhance your life and make you better, make you that better human. Yeah? Stop dreaming about things you could have. If you can have them, have them. If it enhances your life at that time for what you are. If you're happy with the, your partner, be happy with your partner. But do it with them, you know. There is always stuff we can do to improve ourselves. And I swear to God, out of everything that I went through that last couple of years, my, losing my dad, my best friend, uh, my cousin passed away a couple of months ago. In her sleep, she's one year younger than me, legend on the mountains, in the hills, known throughout the country. Right? She just didn't wake up, mate. The shit, life is shit. It happens to you every day. But don't focus on it. You know, don't focus on loss. Celebrate the life. Move on. Brutal. It might sound better.
<laughs> we don't go around wearing black for a fucking month anymore. The world keeps spinning. Shit happens. Yeah. We lose people. Don't let it consume you. I can't let it consume me. I can't let it knock me back. Yeah. It's really hard to try and get across what I'm, I'm trying to say. I don't know how it'll make me sound, how it'll make me feel, but I actually don't care. I'm just speaking as a real person I, from mate, the heart. I, I, go on. And it, it makes you just think, and that's the one thing I've become good at. I'm not giving a fuck what people say or think anymore. I spent a hell of a lot of my life, so the whole of my army career, I was trying to be in the top three of every course I did. Yeah? I was trying to do the right things, get promoted when I was meant to get promoted, but be a good cunt. So if that meant not getting promoted that year, then so be it. I wasn't going to stand there and go, oh, promotion board's out today. I wonder who's going to be on the board. I never did it, mate. I never knew when a board was sitting. Do you know how I found out about promotion boards? My friend's wives would tell me. <laughs> Fucking Jen. Right, so I was never asked about that. At the end of the day, I was good at what I did, got from my friend, it happened. So what, right? That was my career. That's the other thing I always say. You get out, just get out, move on. You've a whole life and a family to support and whatever you need to do, you know? Don't worry about when the next meeting is, or mess meeting is, so you can go back to a mess do. Fucking move on. Get on with your life. Get out, crack on, see the world, do what you gotta do. Be a part of that other community that you've, you know, not stay in the one that you've just left. We all like a reunion every now and then, but we all know the guy that can't wait for the next mess to to be invited back. You ain't going to progress. You ain't going to move on in life. I, yeah, I'm half and half that. I think different no, no, people, yeah. different things. But I mean, go, going, going, going back, I don't get invited to the mess to's anyway, so. <laughs> um, yeah, mate, it's going back, mate, there's... Everything you're saying, like, you, you can see me if I can nod and away to you. You know, mm. 100%. Mm. I, 100%. Everything you're saying, there's two. There's two things, you know, that, that that we, you, are in the unfortunate and fortunate position yeah. of learning the way you've learned it. And and mm. the one and the first thing is, and, and these two things, right? It's like they're so critical now to my mentality and going through life. I'm trying to make them, and I'm trying to action them as they're critical. And same to you. Um, and they're things that I, I, I wish. Everyone should just go, whether they think they've got issues or not, right? Mm. Whether they're ex-military or not, right? The first one is that, is being able to look at yourself, understand your state of mind and the way you're feeling, and look at it, like, objectively, yeah, and recognise where you're suboptimal in something. I've, I'm a bit stressed. I'm a bit anxious. Why is that? Mm. I look at it and go, why? Not, okay, I'm, I'm fucking stressed out. You know, people say, I'm fucking stressed out there. Sorry, I'm just being stressed. Why are you? Yeah. Why? Right? That's the first thing. Identify it. Look at what, look at the issue. And that could be big or small, mate. It could be big or small. People go through life. You're going to, you're going to fucking walk out. You'll go stop at the service station on the, on the way back up to Holly, right? You'll go in. It could be four or five people in there. Guaranteed. Half of them to, or all of them. There's something there uh, they ain't happy with in their life. I just, they're just going through it. It's normal. Yeah. Just normal. It's, it's just like it's fucking normal. No, deal with it. It could be like, you haven't, you, I keep, I, I need to speak to my mother more. Yeah, in the back, just something little Cheers, like that. Mate. Fuck it. Thanks. <laughs> Cheers, mate. Yeah, proper stitched up. <laughs> Fuck's sake. No, but you know what I mean? Yeah. Identify what issue is and fucking, uh, and then it's action it, right? Yeah. Unfortunately for us to know how fucking, how important that and important that stuff is to do, but how easy it is to do, S simple to do, yeah. right? Okay, to learn these lessons, like you have been had to be on the edge of suicide, right? Hmm. It should, it shouldn't, oh, it shouldn't be like that. It shouldn't be like that. Like it, it, part of the good, like my good, like value being a, a valuable, you know, Human. value to me is hmm. exactly this year where you're talking about that and, and, and talking through your issues and what you've learned through it and get the information out which one of the reasons I started this right yeah um but some of the decisions like you say are fucking horrendous but they're only like, to make like you I had a very similar situation to you with a marriage very very similar I got a 14 year old eldest and I got right, a 10 yeah. year old youngest right very similar I'm a few I'm a few, a few, mm. a few years ahead here right are you, all right, Johnny Two Shits. <laughs> um, the decisions are horrendous, but they're yeah. they're only hideous 
initially when you're trying to get out of that bad situation. Mm. When you make those decisions initially, and I hope people don't have to do it, you know what I mean? Yeah, they, yeah, mate, yeah. Right? They make those decisions, whatever those decisions are. I hate my job. I'm going to bin it off and do something else. I hate this group of people who for the last 10 years I spent, uh, and they're my circle of friends. They're not good people, but I hang out all the time. That's what I've done. Bin them off. You know, as an example, it's not just fucking marriage, right? Or relationships. Once you get those big ones out of the way, those mistakes you've made in the past, or things that have just turned, uh, uh, um, evolved to be bad in your life, mm. start off good, bad in your life, right? Once you make those hideous ones, and you're moving forward with that in, in your head, okay, address issues that I'm happy with, things that are bringing me down, things that are restricting me in some way from being a bit happier. It can, it's easier as you go along, because the decisions don't, you don't in, end up in situations which are a nightmare, because you've you're operating on a higher level. You understand yourself more. Yes, it can be a nightmare. Like what you were saying about it, um, emo- you know, be more emotional. <sighs> Man, when you flick that switch and you open yourself up to the emotions, f- yeah. Jay, I blub. I blub all the time. Everything, mate, yeah. 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 Everything. Never used to. No. Fact, I'm not fucking joking, mate. A song can come on in the van <laughs> and I am. I'll sit at the lights. It's tears streaming and this guy, the guy or a woman next to me will be like, what the fuck? And I'm like, <laughs> <laughs> but feel good for doing it. I just, and that's the point I made about with Danny Schofield. I had not cried. I could not remember. I ca- I still can't to this day remember the time I'd cried. I've still not cried. My dad passed away. Not cried. Right. And that's post everything so far. But when I first met Danny, we were in the toilet. That sounds getting fucking weird. Sorry. That me and Danny were in the toilets. <laughs> I was blubbing my eyes out. And when he walked in, and so I blubbed even more. I couldn't stop. I'm sorry. No, I, there was none of that. I just couldn't stop, mate. And it was like, it, I'd built it up. It was like there was a dam had broken and all that. And it was, you know, these shit analogies. I do use shit analogies, sorry. But the point of, about mental health, and I really, I want to touch on another bit. Of that. We spoke about the, the, the party, the pity. Yeah. So what I found through therapy was, I was diagnosed with um, PTSS after Bosnia in 93 or something, 94. That was after I got busted. I got referred to war, uh, to Woolwich stress syndrome, syndrome okay. right? Because I wasn't having flashbacks, apparently, so it wasn't disorder. Right, fuck it don't. Back in the day, this was Woolwich, right? Ward 13, they used to call it. There you go, there's another stigma. They used to call it Ward 13 because we were all bent and mental, right? Fuck okay, it, it's just the military's way of fucking dealing with it. Uh, but you used to go there and it was fucking pointless and I got assessed anyway you know you should just go to jail for smashing your sergeant major or whatever it was so off you fucking go uh, it was pointless but that was always on my records but what it did to all the way through my career I had a history of depression it was generally I was depressed when I wasn't on tour <laughs> right when you look at it when you look at the times and dates I was back up to Catrick or wherever it may be I wasn't on tour or I'd come back off tour and I was suffering depression here's some more tablets off you fuck be a good boy, get back on the horse. And then I volunteer for the first fucking tour that was going. Yeah. When we went through therapy, yeah, I literally thought, oh, it's Afghanistan. Bosnia was a big part for me as well. A fucking terrible place. Um, I just thought it was like the, the, the shit that I'd done. And when you, when she tagged it all the way back, it came back to being in Alder Grove in Northern Ireland in 1989. 17 and a half, just touching on 18 when it was legal, you know what I mean? Uh, speaking to a fucking very influential sergeant in my life, as my young career, as a young soldier, I've been in, joined at 15 and a half, <clears throat> went to Ireland 18, first tour, all this good stuff. And he was very influential, I got to know him. <clears throat> really, really nice guy. He drew his um, weapon systems out of the fucking ready room, walked into the hangar, sat in his gazelle, blew his fucking brains out. Fucking hell. Literally, I walked, I'd been talking to him round the corner, yeah, and I was walking out, and I had to go off duty, right, and on the way, by the time I got to the block, he'd done it, you know what I mean? So, that dragged all the way back to that age, and I, and I said, but I never think about that, I never worry about that, she went, well, how can you tell me every fucking detail about that day, and you're now 48 years old, or whatever it is? That happened when you were 17 and after 18 years old. How can you, that's 40 years ago, how can you tell me about that in that much detail? And I can remember every detail. I can smell the hanger in Aldergrove, you know, all this shit. So 
all the way through my career, the shit that I've been through. So then I went straight to the Gulf in 1990, then, you know, Bosnia, then Iraq, then all this shit, blah, 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 blah. Well, I was in that time, I was in that time frame of the army, I was in the great catchment area of doing them all. So, all the way through my career, oh, it's complex, Peter. Well, I'm not interested, but it is or it isn't. And I remember to this day, I was telling all these symptoms, and she went, well, they're classic symptoms of what you have. I went, well, what, what have I got? I still wouldn't accept it. She went, well, you've got PTSD. I went, right, so you're categorically telling me now I've got PTSD. She went, yeah, went, right, fine. Even that was a tick off the box. I still hadn't accepted what was up with me. But all throughout my career, as all you see, and what I fought the most with was depression and anxiety. I didn't know what anxiety was until I had panic attacks and anxiety, and I hid it. I hid it well. I didn't realise I was hiding it. I just thought I was like, oh, I need another Coke or a Red Bull or something. I don't know. You know, I, it's a hideous thing. And that's a, one of the massive things for me was depression, anxiety. I can go, I used to be able to go from good cunt to fucking suicidal in fucking minutes, mate. I was, catastrophic thinking was what I was all about. Just going to buy something in town could turn into an absolute epic for me. Yeah, and there was a couple of situations I remember when I was going through it, and it was to do with the family at home. You know, we went, we we stopped going out, we stopped going for meals. You know, they'd go on holiday by themselves without me because I just want to stay at home. And oh, there's loads of work to be done around the house. You, I'll stay here. You guys go away on holiday with your mum for a while, and all the rest of it. You know, I have no doubt. You know, I had a major my illness and my life had a major part to play in my marriage failing. Yeah, I'm pretty sure that my wife will say she know you know it was nothing to do with her, right? I'm not going to say whether it was or it wasn't. It's a simple fact of life, you know. I don't I want to pin that on anyone. I will say that I I will I will take responsibility for every one of my actions in life. Is what I was saying to people today. If you can live with every decision you make, then that's fine. I'll take responsibility. When you get married, there isn't a contract that you sign and say, I will be married now for 25 years and we will be happy, you know. Shit happens, people get divorced, you know. So, through, what I'm saying is all the way through, the signs were there, I just didn't see them. Now, you're saying it, I think you think it, you said it's, it's wrong and it's sad that people get to that point that they want to commit suicide, but I can categorically state, and we both know, no, no, I know what you mean. You know what I said, I'm shit at saying things, I said that. Go on. I thought it was sad that I suddenly woke up and got to a point where I thought the only thing right was to go. It, it's just, of all the things I've done in my life, right, and I've done quite a bit for somebody with my age, I still look back on that and think, how could I, with everything I have, and this is what I used to sell a corporate to. It was really effective, actually. I know that sounds bad, but I want people to understand the emotion. To be very successful, running my own business, fucking have the money that I need for the family, but then still want to wake up every... I could. And this is what I used to say. I used to wake up every morning, look at my wife, get out of bed, go into the ensuite, turn the shower on. By the time I turned the shower on, I fucking wanted to be off the planet. Yeah, I just did not want to be alive most mornings. How How is that possible? How does your brain get to that state? How does your brain get to the point where all I've done was go up and get a wash? Fuck's sake, I'm meant to be achieving something, having a wash in the morning. Yeah, I've achieved something, I've had a wash. No, I wanted to fucking, I didn't want to step back out of that shower. Didn't want to face the world, didn't want to do anything, just wanted to fucking die. It's that fucking simple and that brutal. To then get on and try and run a business and do that, I, I just don't know. I don't know. I'm very confused still how I got to that point. How I got to not wanting to be on the planet. Why? Why? Why the fuck? Yeah. Still confused, mate. In in a, in a way, because everything points to not being that way. You know, it does. Successful, marriage, house, money, car, fucking whatever you want. You know, how can you be that way? And not want to be off, and that's why I don't. I don't think how you can ever solve. You know, we're trying to solve cancer and these diseases and stuff like that, but I don't know we're ever going to even begin to start to solve the mental health issue. I because do. let's face facts, mate. After stopping war fighting, 
are we tip of the iceberg yet or are we halfway through there's a lot of young lads out there they said it took me i left in 2013 yeah i have a history of depression and anxiety through my service but 2000 about 2016 really before it hits its peak yeah, a few I think, years um, after I fall into that bracket of a few years after, uh, yeah, and don't forget, yeah. I don't hate the army. I didn't get out with a chip on my shoulder. I retired. I got out. I stopped working. I didn't want to take a commission. <laughs> Had to been a shit officer anyway. But the fact of the matter was is that I chose to leave. So I did everything on my terms. I wasn't bitter. Didn't miss the military. Didn't. I do not. I still don't miss it, mate. In that respect, happy with everything I've achieved. Happy with everything I've done. Yeah, don't want to join the reserves. Don't want to teach cadets. Just want to be a civvy, grow my hair long, smoke a bit of weed, whatever you need to do. Yeah, get on with my next life. Because don't forget, I forgot I've got my pension. I've still got work another twenty five years to fucking get to retire. So you know you've got to get on with it in that respect. I just don't know through the whole of my mental health journey, and it's not over yet, how I got to where I got, and I look back on that, and that's why I think. I have to change so much. Let's have a look at it. My complete life has changed. I've moved from Manchester to the Highlands of Scotland because I just need to keep getting away. I, I went away the other week for a two-day break just because I needed to reset, like we talk about. I make myself do it now. To the northwest coast of Scotland, and I swear to God, on the way home, yeah, <laughs> I was looking at jobs in Ullapool. Ullapool Fishing Village, yeah, there was a job going, £20,000 a year, live-in fish and chip shop manager. <laughs> doesn't mate, sound healthy, mate. <laughs> dude, for a northern bloke, right? I was like, and Joe, the girl I'm living with, was like, I went, but there's registered nurses jobs. We can keep going. We can do this. Let's go further. I wasn't thinking about anything else. I was just thinking about my happiness selfishly. I but it's not selfish, mate, is it? But some people would say it was, you know, oh my God, you know, but your daughter's in Manchester. Oh, well, that's... Yeah, yeah, but listen, my daughter would rather have me on the planet. Exactly. Than fucking not. 100%. I am so proud of still being on this planet rather than the other option because it ain't fucking worth thinking about. Yeah? Another one of the lads, Royal, working with us this weekend, got a message yesterday. Oh, no, this morning. Another Royal, sadly, has took his life. Well, this, every this fucking is, um, day, mate, we're getting smaller every day. This is, a, this is. A, I think, with the mental health aspect, we've got about ten minutes left, right? Yeah, okay. I think with the mental health aspect, where so you're saying you got, you know, there's more, there's more mental health issues going to come out of the wash. People, you know, for me, the the military, and then working when I left the military, working in the Middle East, that that just masked, yeah. This symptoms, it yeah. just masked it, right? It was yeah. just addressing over the top, yeah, not addressing it. It just masked it. I couldn't see it, right? Do you not think that was like a drug? You left what you were doing, but you had the option to still go and do it in a different environment. So it was like, oh, I can still go and do that. What was um, the pull for you, though? What was the pull? Why did you do it? Because it, it, I, I mm, because it was just a natural the natural progression. Into that, yeah. Military community. There was no, yeah, you know, it's like no transition, but because I was just, I mean, I walked on a contract with 100 odd people. Yeah. 70% of them are power edge, and most of them I knew. Yeah. <laughs> so fucking hell. But I mean, it just, it just masked things over the top. But, and then I, and then, and then when I came back to work in the UK mm-hmm. and tried to go into a normal, in inverted commas, life, then when you come, that normality, then my abnormal behaviours, and just, I don't mean extreme, I just mean mm. general, the abnormalities around how I would be in myself as a person, they just sort of, you could, they, 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 you see them then. You, you can see them, right? Um, but I think that with these, this increase in mental health issues that exponentially, it's going to, man, yeah. it's going to manifest itself, right? But I do think that people are better placed now than they were before oh. because of people like yourself, yeah. um, uh, yourself, Foxy, yeah. you know, you've got, you've got, mate, I'm not at that level. No, no, but I mean, <laughs> <That's> <laughs> no, but what I mean is, right, you, you, I'm referring to people 
who are respected among their peer group, mm. right? Uh, no, mind it. No, mind it being on TV. For, yeah, for yeah, 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 but respected yeah, yeah. among their peer group, right? Yeah. Um, high functioning individuals who are regarded as alpha fucking males, right. uh, as alpha as an alpha male can get. Yeah, mm-hmm. an alpha male in a community of alpha males, SF. Yeah, m- just military, right? Yeah. That's as average you can get, right? And you got people like you and Foxy and other people. I, did, yeah, I could name yeah, them yeah. a million, right? Bry Woods, all these, lights, right? Yeah. Exactly, right? Who are, who are, who've gone through dog shit, dealt with it themselves, but the big not themselves dealt with it, getting through the other side. But the massive one is they're swallowing the pride pill yeah. and getting on TV, mm. radio, podcasts. Blogs, Instagram, like you do, and fucking talking about it, mate. Yeah, mate. Because that breaks down a huge stigma with the military, especially with the army and uh, and SF. That weakness is a bad thing. You can't show any weakness. That's yeah, that's that's great, and, and that's applicab- applicable in a lo- in a lot of areas. Yeah. But yeah. when you've got a fucking issue emotionally, it, unfortunately, it doesn't it doesn't it doesn't apply. You've got to you've got to bring it up. You've got to deal with it, right? You have to identify it and deal with it. And in doing that, now it's saying I think we, I think people who are going to struggle down the line, are going to be a, have a, a lot more tools at their disposal and find the struggle a lot less. It's going to be fucking difficult. But yeah. I think it, either short or, or they'll just because more like more likely, mate. To not get to that point that you've been, and not get, I've been to that point yeah, as well. Yeah. Get to that point and go. Yeah. I don't want to be here. End it, because one of the things that, uh, that resonate me there when you were saying is you can't understand how you got to that point of I don't want to be on the planet. It's the same year. Yeah, I, I understand how I got there. You just was, get there. I understand. Yeah. I understand how I things the external influences that, that yeah, put you me can, into a mental state but madness mate madness. you can you can look back and see that i can dissect the oh, good thing i just like look back at my whole journey and i think Fucking hell, yeah. but at that time i swear to god up on the fells i remember standing there sometimes going i don't even know how i got here today what the, what the fuck what is happening to me you know why am why i was like why why why, why do, internal battles i i live you try and keep it yeah 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 i lived one of my biggest problems was i live with mass masses of guilt i've just got this complex and i think that when i left the military over the couple of years i grew a complex and i started dissecting situations i've been you know i've been involved with and i grew this complex right that's simple that's all i can put it down to at the moment i'm sure more will come out as life as i carry on living because i fucking will it's as simple as that you know there's got i've got too much now you know as i've always i've just got more than i ever had i've not got too much now i've got more than i ever had to live for so it's as simple as that and yeah i am on a bit of a journey and yeah i'm on a bit of a mission but fuck it if that's what distracts me from it that's what i'm going to use the only other thing i'd love to have mentioned was the pity party Go right, on. and Good it's time. just this it's just this issue I have got. So I was involved with a charity in Manchester and they're still going, you know. I just obviously moved away so it's nothing to do with me anymore. But we helped people, or they helped people. I was just an ambassador for it and I'd been around and I'd seen these guys. And I am sick to the back teeth of there is a stigma evolving around mental health now. It's like, oh, if you're in the military, you must have mental health problems if you're shit at work. No, they might just be shit cunts that you've employed. They might just be little wankers that want everything given to them. So let's use the chains that are out there. Let's use the correct procedures for helping these guys and get it sorted. Because there are a lot of people taking advantage from it now and they are draining the fucking services that people need. Most of us who do, me, Justin, Inspire49, all these lads, we all say the same. We've all met people who are taking the piss, right? That's fucking the worst thing you can do for this. There's people like who have been down that line. It's fucking wrong. And that's quite a brutal way of saying it, but it needs to be said. Example, there was a lad we were helping there, right? I won't, there's, you know, there's no details of him. I mean, you don't need to. Got him a flat. Got him a job. Got him all the white goods, got him food to put in the fridge, even near enough got him his own vehicle, right? To get him, because the thing that was getting him down was being around his family and being in a flight. He he needed to be on his own. He needed to be self-sustainable. He needed to be individual to get doing what he needed to do. We got him that. Two months, great, going to work. I drove past him on the M60 going around Manchester, seeing him, you know, big truck. Yeah? A couple of months later, Facebook, fuck this shit. It's fucking shit. I'm, I've stopped the world. I'm getting off. And I was like, you fucking what? 
I went fucking crazy. I was like, why? And the jet, the whole thing was about, he thought everyone had stopped caring about him. What? Nobody would stopped caring about him. We'd given him the ability to, to get his, the thing that he wanted most was his independence. Believe it or not, he wanted to be away from his family so he could feel his independence, like living in the block. He could get away. He had a job and he had a purpose in life. You know, we'd given him what he needed to be to get there. And he simply jumped straight back to what he thought would get him more, what he felt he needed, right? So maybe we got it wrong. Maybe, we, we, you know, we should have encouraged him to get into therapy more or go and so, go to chat groups and talk group. Andy's Man's Club, brilliant thing. You know, I've got to mention that. What, That's what a brilliant thing. Andy's Man's Club is basically, it's another thing set up by rugby league, but they're spreading throughout the country, mate. We've got loads in Scotland now. I've met up with the guys up in Scotland and we are, you know, we're doing bits and pieces with them. And it's basically a group that meets every Monday night in locations near you google search it find it yeah it's completely anonymous you literally turn up grab a brew or a wet sit down i'm in that break point zone now mate we've got to say both right and you sit down and talk to men from all walks of life with all different problems yeah and you talk about what is on your mind that day what is making your blood boil yeah whatever is affecting your stability at that time it's fucking brilliant right they do it inside prisons for prisoners you know they're, they're in prisons you know they're doing so much and again it's a little one of them charities that actually doing not charity as such but they're just doing something practical they're not talking about doing it that's the other stigma let's all talk about doing something for mental health and set something i mean that's probably me at the moment because we haven't actually got a head shed i'm just talking about it but the fact of the matter is, is there's so many things and so many people out there doing it for their own benefit the next minute they're selling products to raise awareness of their job, but what are they actually doing? It's a trendy subject, isn't it? And I've got to touch on it. It's trendy, so everyone wants a part of it. But yeah. to help, you've got to be effective. You've got to be doing something. Not just talking about talking about doing stuff. I could go online every day and say, oh, it's good to talk, you know? People need to be effective. They need to be actioning stuff. They need to be doing stuff to be helping everyone. Yeah? Talking about helping somebody doesn't do anything. You picking up the phone and phoning a mucker, yeah? Checking on him, saying, are you all right? Does more at that moment in time for that one individual than you do with your 15 million followers online saying you can help him people. Mm. Right, I'm sorry, it fucking does. Yeah. 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 When I do my little posts on my mentality chat on Instagram, if one person asks me a question, yeah, I'm happy with that. If one person gets in touch with me, I like that. I've had so many of my young lads, because obviously through my career I've been different stages leading lads and what have you. I've had so many lads get back in touch with me that I thought hated me, to be fair. And it probably was a bit of a dick when I was in, you know, like Sam age or whatever, beasting people who've got in touch and I've chatted to him about stuff. Yeah, it's fucking, it's brutally amazing, mate, to be fair, to see this happening. So, you know what? Actions speak louder than words, really, in a lot of places here. You know, I don't mind everyone having a go. I'm not having a pop at anyone in, sp in particular, but have a look at yourselves. If you're not actually affecting change or doing anything, then make it happen. Don't just talk about talking about doing it. You know, there's, it's such a trendy subject at the moment. There's so many people out there, you know, either trying to raise their own profile, right, and that's sad, around mental health, raising your own profile, right, talking about shit that probably isn't right, yeah, or just for the sake of bigging yourself up or raising the profile of your own business. If you're not affecting change within mental health, don't do it. It's wrong. It's wrong to take it. You're taking advantage of it. That's what I'm saying. Mm. And I'm, it's just wrong, mate. The amount of people I've had message me about the headshed and say, oh, uh, do you want to go and do this and do this? No, mate. I'm not here to make a fucking profit out of it, you lunatic. I'm out here to help people. No, it's not a charity. And that's explained if if people want to know about the headshed. They've got to just... Well, we've got, we got to wrap it up, mate. That's so, what I mean. We, but, they but, need to go on and look at it. So how do people do that? Right, so the Headshed Base, rather than follow me, Mentality Chat J on Instagram, I'd rather you went and followed Headshed Base, just type it in, you'll see it, uh, and watch the little YouTube video, and if you've got any questions, just message me. 
ask me because I will need that community to grow. I really want the headship based community to grow because when that does, I'll drop them my mentality chat and I'll just be doing it all on there anyway. But it's basically going to be a bespoke retreat in the Highlands of Scotland in an amazing location when we when we get one permanent that will be running bespoke retreat weekends for people at a certain stage of therapy, after therapy, after therapy, post therapy to do what I did and go on uh, and live the life and be the person that they've become once they've come out of therapy and live that life Mega. and move forward. Mega. How do people follow it if they're not on Instagram? Uh, they don't. It's Instagram, either that okay. or YouTube, mate, at the moment. Okay, we go. Yeah, cool. we're not that big. Mega. Yeah. I'll put a link in the uh, in the blurb on this as well. Mate. Mega. Jess, been an absolute pleasure, mate. Mate, it's flown by. I'm so I've rattled on. I'm sorry, mate. <laughs> I'm sorry, mate. <laughs> mate. Fucking hell. Sorry. Perfect. Yeah. Cheers, bud. Thanks, mate. I really enjoyed it.